Mars. The Space Shuttle, the world's premier space transportation vehicle, carrying people in payloads to and from Earth orbit for science, technology, and operational research. The Space Shuttle has demonstrated time and again that it is up to the challenge of spaceflight today and well into the 21st century. intricate series of events that seemingly takes place with such ease, the space shuttle lifts off the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center in Florida and ascends towards space. It looks almost routine. We try to make it seem routine. You know, this, this business of launching into space, we do it so well that, uh, that everybody thinks it's routine. But uh, strapping four and a half million pounds of explosive on your back and accelerating from zero to 17,500 miles an hour in eight and a half minutes is, is nothing routine. To make the complex and challenging look easy, each flight of the space shuttle requires meticulous planning and preparation, and the knowledge and skill of thousands of highly trained professionals working together behind the scenes all across the country. In Houston, Texas, and in Florida, teams work simultaneously on different operational aspects of shuttle missions, but all work together on an integrated team toward the same goal, to make human space exploration possible. Good. Management of the space shuttle program begins at Johnson Space Center in Houston, where NASA employees and contractors merge their talents in the development of space shuttle missions, with responsibilities ranging from flight planning and design to crew selection and training. Planning a space shuttle mission begins after payload requests are studied and flight feasibility is confirmed. Once approved and assigned to the shuttle flight manifest, flight planners go to work defining specific requirements for flight operations. Then, NASA must decide on a key element of the mission, the crew. Astronauts begin their careers at NASA one to two years before they're eligible for an actual flight assignment. During that time, the astronauts must undergo an intensive basic training program. The astronaut trainees are taught how to survive if forced to fend for themselves in the wilderness or in the water. They learn what to expect if required to eject from a high-speed aircraft and how to handle emergency situations should they arise during a space shuttle flight. To become familiar with some of the dynamic and physiological effects associated with space travel and to build flight team skills, the astronauts train in two-seat twin-engine T-38 jets and in the KC-135 a modified cargo plane equipped with a padded payload compartment. The aircraft flies in a parabolic pattern, much like a roller coaster, that simulates microgravity during the freefall phase. This helps introduce the astronauts to the feeling of weightlessness and allows them to understand the dynamics of body motion under weightless conditions. Once astronaut candidates successfully complete their training, they are eligible to be selected for a shuttle mission. After an astronaut crew is announced, a training manager is assigned to work with the crew commander to assess each crew member's training history and develop a training program that will match the requirements of the mission. A training team is also assembled to train the astronauts and the flight control team for that mission. For the update, and just to give you an update on the weather down here, we're looking at a go forecast. It is the flight control team that will monitor all onboard shuttle systems during the flight and will serve as the communications link between the astronauts and Earth, sharing responsibility for the success of the tightly choreographed mission. With the goals of the mission in mind, the astronaut pilots take their training to the sky in the shuttle training aircraft. The shuttle training aircraft is designed to handle like the space shuttle during final approach and is used to practice space shuttle landing maneuvers. The astronaut pilots fly the shuttle training aircraft from an altitude of 35,000 feet and perform simulated shuttle landings at Edwards Air Force Base, California, the Kennedy Space Center, and White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. Back on the ground, the astronauts continue to practice shuttle launch and entry in the motion-based simulator. As its name implies, 
It simulates movement by the use of hydraulic lifts. Inside the simulator, the astronauts can see out the windows through the use of a digital image system that simulates scenes outside the orbiter. This computer-generated scenery and hands-on approach to shuttle flight training helps prepare the commanders and pilots for the real thing, maneuvering the orbiter in space to meet the objectives of the mission and then returning the spacecraft and its crew safely back to Earth. While the commanders and pilots hone their flying skills, mission specialists practice other precise maneuvers, such as learning how to operate the shuttle's remote manipulator system, or robot arm. In orbit, they'll use the robot arm to deploy payloads from the shuttle's cargo bay, or to hold their crewmates steady while they perform specific spacewalking tasks. To learn how to walk in space, the mission specialists don spacesuits and descend underwater. The spacesuits are configured for water work and weighted to be neutrally buoyant when submerged. In this way, the mission specialists can become proficient in a variety of spacewalking tasks before actually walking into the void of space. Mission specialists also train extensively for the work they'll do inside the orbiter conducting research that advances space exploration, scientific knowledge, and benefits life on Earth. To develop their skills as a crew, the astronauts begin their team training with a series of standalone lessons in the fixed base simulator. The simulator is designed with high fidelity controls and displays which realistically mimic those of the actual space shuttle so that the astronauts can practice on-orbit operations specific to their mission. While the astronauts and flight controller teams are preparing at Johnson Space Center for their part in the next shuttle mission, support teams at Kennedy Space Center are preparing orbiters that have returned from space for new missions and awaiting the arrival of the next astronaut crews. As a returning shuttle rolls to a stop at the Kennedy Space Center on one of the longest runways in the world, its current mission comes to an end. But the career of the orbiter continues. Within hours of its arrival, Either after landing at Kennedy Space Center or returning aboard a ferry flight on the shuttle carrier aircraft, the orbiter is towed to the orbiter processing facility, where post-flight refurbishment begins. Space shuttle main engines, which have been refurbished, are installed here, along with payloads processed in a horizontal position. Other payloads may be installed vertically later at the launch pad. While the shuttle is being prepared for its flight, the astronauts fly from Johnson Space Center to Kennedy Space Center to meet their Kennedy team members and to familiarize themselves with the orbiter and its payloads. Dressed in protective outer garments, the astronauts and members of the Kennedy Space Center team meticulously inspect the shuttle's cargo to ensure that it is ready for flight and to discuss any changes that might have been made to the systems. When the shuttle processing is complete in the orbiter processing facility, the orbiter is towed into the vehicle assembly building. There it is hoisted to a vertical position in the high bay and mated to its external tank and solid rocket boosters. After assembly and checkout in the vehicle assembly building is complete, the shuttle is rolled out and begins its slow journey to the launch pad. Attached to a mobile launcher platform, the shuttle assembly is hauled from the vehicle assembly building on a giant crawler transporter originally built for the Apollo missions and modified for the shuttle era. It will take the shuttle about six hours to travel the three miles to the Oceanside launch pad. With the shuttle on the pad, the astronauts participate in a dress rehearsal for the final countdown. They suit up and climb aboard the shuttle while launch controllers perform a simulated countdown to launch. This helps guarantee that when the launch occurs, the astronauts and the launch control team are fully prepared for their joint operation during liftoff. During the final weeks prior to flight, the astronauts focus on intensive team training back at Johnson Space Center to perfect their proficiency as a unit. Then together with the Mission Control Center and on some flights the Payload Control Center, the astronaut crew participates in integrated training in which flight controllers interact with the astronauts just as they would during a real flight situation. Data and communication lines link the flight control team and mission control with the astronauts in the shuttle mission simulator 
mimicking the air-to-ground communication system used during an actual shuttle flight. Normal, contingency, and malfunction scenarios are developed and simulated. Exercising the crew and flight control team's interaction and expertise in all aspects of flight operations, such as rendezvous and docking maneuvers, satellite deployments, spacewalks, and science and technology experiments. When fully prepared for their mission in space, the astronauts return to the Cape. During the last few hours before liftoff, a half million gallons of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are loaded into the shuttle's external fuel tank for use by the main engines. With the shuttle poised on the pad, fueled and ready to go, the astronauts have their pre-flight meal and then suit up in their launch and entry suits. With final preparations completed, the astronaut crew walks out from the crew quarters, files past well-wishers and reporters, and climbs into NASA's transport van for the ride to the pad. Once the astronauts are strapped inside the orbiter and all shuttle systems checkouts are completed, the final countdown begins. We have a go for engine start. Three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Atlantis on the fourth flight to dock with the Russian space station. And once again, a shuttle Open clears the tower door. and a seamless transition takes place as control shifts from the Kennedy Launch Control Team to the Johnson Flight Control Team in Houston. Flight booster, the message is inducer only. Each top. As the shuttle and its astronauts climb to space, another mission gets underway, beginning a new cycle for both humans and machinery, demonstrating that teamwork is the building block of human spaceflight that will move us one step closer to the future, back to the moon, and on to the planets beyond Earth's orbit.